Good day, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is D.R. Arellano, and I'm a full-time missionary serving in the Live Christ, Share Christ mission. I've been a missionary for six years now, and I've started to get to know the Lord when I was still young. Growing up, I could remember my mom teaching us to pray the Holy Rosary every night before we go to sleep. And every Sunday, I would remember my dad leading us to the church for Sunday Mass. And since then, every single day of my life is a manifestation of God's love for me. I would always recognize His presence and grace in everything that's happening in my life. God is with me, and I know and I'm sure that He is with you and in you as well. And He offers Himself to each and every one of us. Friends, welcome to the third session of our Life in Christ seminar. The title of this session is Repentance and Faith. For the past two sessions, we were reminded that because of God's love for us, He sent Jesus, His only begotten Son, to save us from our sins. And He offers His love for us every single day of our lives. We were also told that in order for us to be a living witness to Christ, we are to love God and love our neighbor. And upon hearing all of these things from the past sessions, we are now called to respond to God's love, grace, and fellowship. That genuine love that God is offering, we are called to respond. He offers Himself to us. Now the question is, what should be our response? How can we give back? How can we answer? When God is giving His love to all of us, His love, His message, what shall we do? If we go to Mark chapter 1, verse 15, Jesus said, This is the time of fulfillment, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Meaning to say, brothers and sisters, the perfect response to Jesus is repentance and faith. We need to repent and change our lives, and we need to believe in the gospel. Have faith in Jesus and in the message that he brings. Now, repentance and faith will always go together. We can't repent and not have faith, or have faith but do not repent. It is inadequate just to have one without the other. To just change our lives is not enough. Even the pagans or even non-believers can change their lives as well. But we need to also believe in God and in His plans for all of us. On the other hand, to simply believe in God without doing anything to change our lives, to be pleasing to God, is also not enough because faith without action is dead. So today, let's talk about this beautiful response. Let's talk about repentance and faith. First, Let's talk about repentance. What is repentance? The Greek word for repentance is metanoia, which literally means a change of mind, a change of mindset. It's not just admitting one's fault or simple confession of wrongdoing, but rather it refers to a change in direction, like a 180 degree turn. Do you drive a car? If you drive a car, it's just like having a U-turn. Repentance affects the way you think, you act, your attitudes, your motives, thoughts, and behaviors. It's literally having a significant change in the way you live your life. Letting go of the old set of ideals and values and adopting a new one. Specifically, repentance is turning away from sin. It's turning away from evil and wrongdoings. It's even turning away from running your own life. Why? Because repentance is turning to a life of obedience to God and having Jesus take control of your life. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if this is repentance, then what is not repentance? First, repentance is not dependent on feelings alone. It doesn't mean that you feel sorry now, it's repentant already. It doesn't depend on your feelings, rather, 
it depends on an objective decision to accept only God's righteousness in one's life and rejecting anything that is apart from it. Repentance is not based on feelings, but it depends on your decision to follow God. Second, repentance is not being sorry for our sins because we are afraid of the consequences. We should not confuse sorrow for sin with sorrow for the consequences of sin. It's like being sorry only because you were caught cheating in an examination versus being sorry for the act of committing the cheating that you did. Friends, we must hate sin itself. So, if we know what repentance is all about and what it's not, what must we do in order for us to repent? Number one, be honest. I know it's hard and it takes great courage, but we should admit that we have sin in our lives and we have been committing sin over and over again. Let us be true and honest to ourselves and in front of God. Number two, renounce sin. Renounce means to reject or to stop. This means we are to reject sin by actively turning away from it and decide and strive hard not to do it again. Number three, ask for forgiveness. It's like every time we sin, we move one step away from God. That's why when we sin, we ask for forgiveness. And as we ask for forgiveness from God, let us also be confident that God will forgive us. In the first letter of John, chapter one, verse nine, he said, if we acknowledge our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. God loves us and He will forgive us when we ask for forgiveness. Pope Francis said, God never gets tired of forgiving us. It's us who gets tired of asking for forgiveness. Actually, when we remember the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, after spending everything that the prodigal son got from his father through gambling and women, and even the place where he stayed or where, where he's staying suffered from famine, he had nothing in the end. That's why he went back to his father's house and asked for forgiveness. The father, out of his great love for his son, forgave him and gave him back his ring, his clothes, and gave him a feast and celebration for his return. We can see that if we turn back to God, our Father, no matter how badly we have lived our lives, he will restore us to our rightful place as his children. Number four, receive the sacrament of reconciliation. Have a good confession. Nothing beats a good confession. Asking for forgiveness and having the humility to accept that we are in need of God's grace and love. God welcomes us back in His arms again, ready to love us and accept us and to forgive us. And because we all know or reminded of all these things, we should talk about the specific sins that we are to renounce so that we can fully turn back to God and receive His immense love for each and every one of us. The Greek word for sin is hamartia, which means missing the mark or failure to hit the target. It means that when we sin, we miss the mark and we miss the standard of living a life that is in a relationship with God. Sin takes us away from God. It separates us from God. Therefore, we must know what are the sins that we need to repent from. And these are not just the so-called small sins or small stuff sins, though we also have to repent from those sins. Friends, we are talking about mortal sins, such as the following. Number one, spiritualism and the occult. This includes witchcraft, fortune telling, playing spirit of the glass, or anything that involves activities such as these. These are the things that we need to repent from. It doesn't help us to be in a relationship with God, 
but rather it separates us from the plan of the Lord. Number two, sexual wrongdoing, such as sexual intercourse outside marriage, adultery, and active homosexuality. We need to also repent from these because it destroys God's original plan for love and sexuality. We, need to rep- we also need to repent from abortion, contraception, which the Catholic Church says as intrinsic evil. Also, we need to repent from serious crimes such as murder, rape, kidnapping, robbery, and corruption. Even drunkenness. Not just the simple drinking, but drunkenness and losing control of ourselves because of too much alcohol. And of course, taking illegal drugs. Lastly, we must also repent from not going to Sunday Mass every week because that is our obligation as Christians. These are the mortal sins that we have to repent from. And these things and actions takes us away from God. But God's mercy is greater than His justice. Just like what we talked about earlier, we are to ask God for forgiveness with honesty and humility in our hearts. And He will forgive us. Also, as we ask for forgiveness, we also believe and have faith that God will forgive us. That's why it's time that we talk about faith. Faith is belief in the gospel, which is the good news of salvation in Jesus. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 11, it says there, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and the evidence of the things not seen. Faith is not just simply believing, but it's also accompanied by personal act and decision. It has several aspects to consider. According to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he in me. Friends, faith is a definite act. Therefore, we must open the door if Jesus is to come into our lives. He keeps on knocking into our lives into our hearts and he wants to enter and have an intimate relationship with you with us having faith in him is opening the door and letting him in faith is also an individual act we have to open the door to our own heart no one can do that for us it should be ourselves who will voluntarily open our hearts to god faith is a deliberate act We don't wait for a supernatural light or a big bang to happen in our lives or even an emotional experience or maybe even a St. Paul road to Damascus experience. We don't wait for that to happen and overtake us. Why? Because we already know that Jesus came to this world and died for us. We already know that story. He is now knocking outside the door of our hearts waiting for us to let him in and the next move is us brothers and sisters faith is an urgent act right now we realize that the future is indeed uncertain we never know what happens next time is passing away and we have to act now and lastly faith is an indispensable act It is a step needed to receive all God has promised. Faith is relying on all God has said. When Jesus asked Peter to walk on water, we saw Peter's faith in God as he held on to what Jesus told him. Faith is holding on to Christ. Faith is us believing in God while walking on our own water of fears and uncertainties. God has promised us a new life in Him. And faith, brothers and sisters, is accepting that life that He is offering and letting God show to us how to live it. It takes courage and we must be willing to do whatever God wants of us and to actually do it. When we repent and have faith, a lot of good things can happen to us. 
In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, it is said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. Friends, when we repent and have faith, we receive a promise of salvation from sin, Satan, and death. Aside from that, we also receive a promise of forgiveness and eternal life with God. In Luke chapter 11, verses 9 to 15, it says here, And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? God is giving us a promise of new life in the Spirit. He offers a new life with Him. He offers His Spirit to us. And we can pray for a greater release of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Christian life is really never going to be easy. When we sin, when we fail, we remember how hard it is. But today, we are reminded that we are to turn away from sins and wrongdoing and to turn our lives to God and have faith in Him. Because in Him, there is forgiveness. In Him, there is peace. In Him, there is love. In Him, there is the promise of eternal life. 2,000 years ago, Jesus sounded the call to repentance and faith. It is the same call to us today. We are called to turn away from sin and all obstacles to God and accept Jesus as Lord. My dear friends, may we all welcome Jesus in our hearts and in our lives through a life of repentance and a life of faith. Thank you so much and God bless us all.